everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna to be doing my second video in my series, I Want to Paint Your, and this video is I Want to Paint Your Wedding Photo. So congratulations to our winner, Victoria, and her husband, Seth. I'm gonna be painting your wedding photo and I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to do. Okay, so to start, I'm just gonna go through my materials. Here I have my iPad Pro with me today. If you don't have an iPad, for this you can always just print off your wedding photo and trace it. That is right, we are tracing today. I wanted to make it as simple and as easy as we could. So you can always just print off your photo, put it up against a window and trace it with your watercolor paper using the sun as a light box. But if you do have an iPad, I'll teach you how to use that. And I also have my Apple Pencil. I have my Winsor Newton Professional Watercolors in my palette, my Princeton Snap Brush in a size six round. And I also have a pencil and a paper, nope, pencil and eraser. And I have my Arches Watercolor Paper. Okay, so let's move all this stuff out of the way first. And we are gonna do the technical piece. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is open up your Procreate app. If you don't have Procreate, I suggest you get it. It's a great tool, I use it all the time. And here, I'll just show you. You're gonna click on the little plus button here and just click, or just select screen size. Sorry if I'm a little not speaking well today. Um, and then you're gonna wanna insert your photo. So make sure your photo is already on your iPad in your camera roll. Then you're gonna go up here to the little wrench button and you're gonna click insert a photo. Okay, so go to your recents and pick the photo. So this is our winner, Victoria and her husband, Seth. They are going on their second wedding anniversary, I believe this summer. So this is their wedding photo. I had a hard time picking through everyone's wedding photos. They're all stunning and gorgeous and I wanted to paint them all, but I don't have time for that. So I had to narrow it down and these are our winners. Guys, you're all making me want to get married again. Your photos are beautiful. So I'm going to show you how to paint using their photo today. So it's already selected here, that little arrow, and you're just gonna make it bigger, as big as you can, the canvas size, and then unselect, and just make it as big as you can, okay? Now, we are going to want to trace over this. Um, if I just put my watercolor paper on top, it's gonna be a little bit harder to see the outline um, because of all the different colors and stuff like that. So we're gonna outline it first with um, a little sketch. So. What I wanna do first is I wanna make this photo a bit lighter so I see my sketch. So I'm just gonna click on this little magic wand here, click opacity, and I'm gonna bring the opacity down a bit so I can still see the photo, but it's very light. Now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna create a new layer, little plus button, and you can see layer two is selected, there's nothing there, and it is highlighted blue so you know you're on the right layer. Now, pick any drawing tool, I just have a technical pen here, and it's easiest to see black, so make sure your color is black, okay? And now we can start tracing. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so I can make sure I get all the detail in there and go around the lines as best as I can. Okay, so while you guys are watching me trace this photo, I thought I'd let you know that my next video in this series is gonna be, I want to paint your pet. And if you guys know me, I don't really like painting animals, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. So if you wanna submit a photo of your pet, email me in the email in the description below, and I will pick a winner by May 15th. So submit it before then and best of luck. Okay, so once you think you've got kind of the gist of the outline, you can click on here and you're gonna click this little box beside the photo to get rid of that, um, the photo so you can just see your sketch. Just make sure you haven't missed anything. If you wanna tweak something, you can just bring it back by clicking it again. So I know that there's gonna be flowers over here. So I'm just gonna make sure it connects so it, it looked like there was a bunch of stuff missing from where the groom's back was. Okay, and the flowers are obviously not gonna look like that. I just kinda of wanted to place them where they are. Um, but yeah, so if you wanna make any little parts darker, just so it'll be easier to see when you actually trace it, do that. But now you're gonna turn off all your lights or go into a dark room. I'm gonna to have to go in my bathroom to trace this part, I think. And you're just gonna place this overhead. Let's see if we can see it a little bit. Okay, it's very, very hard to see here, but I will be able to see it once I go into my bathroom. Um, 
make sure, yes, make sure the brightness is all the way up on your iPad if you're using it like this. Just sometimes it might be very dull, but yeah, I'm gonna go trace this onto my Arches watercolor paper and then I will be right back. I just wanted to show you quickly what it looks like when you do use it as a light box. Yes, I am in my bathroom right now. <laughs> um, it's not too, too clear, but it's clear enough that you can kind of get the gist of where everything goes. So just try your best to trace it from here. Okay, so I'm done the tracing part. I did end up securing the paper down to the iPad with some tape because it was moving around a lot and it was driving me nuts, so I did that. Now I'm just going to go back to my layers. I'm going to take away the outline layer, bring back the regular photo, go to the little magic wand, bring up that opacity, and I'm gonna take my pen. So I have a Tombow mono drawing pen in a size 03. Whatever pen you have is perfect, as long as it is um, waterproof, because we're gonna be painting over after. And now I'm just going to go over my outline and do any other detail that I think I may need to add with the pen. So let's do that. So now that I'm done my outline, I didn't outline the flowers because I think I'm going to do those with watercolor first and then I'll outline them. And I just wanted to focus on this first. So let's erase our pencil lines. Make sure your ink is dry first before you erase. Okay, so now we have our outline and we're ready to start painting. So I am going to be using my Princeton snap brush in a size six to start. And I'm going to start by creating their skin tone. So they both have a light peach skin tone. So I already have a pink and a yellow here. So I'm just gonna mix that peach like that. I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber to give it a bit of a brown. And then I'm just gonna add tons of water. I'm gonna water it down to as light as I can, okay? And I'm just gonna go over their skin with the first layer of a really light wash of peach. And then we will gradually build it up with more skin tone color and shadows. Okay, so while this part is still wet, I'm just gonna place a bit more color into where the shadows would be. So grab a little bit more pigment so around the ear, the back of the neck, underneath the chin here, around the forehead a bit. Just look at your photo and see where some of those shadows are placed. Right here on the cheek, on the nose a bit. So basically there's a bit of a highlight just on the face right there, on the chest, close to the dress, like that. And to get more of a highlight, I'm just gonna wash and dry off my brush and then I'm just gonna try and mop up some of the color here to make it a bit more highlighted. Okay, and we will go back in and add more um, shadow after too. Okay, so let's do the arms. So again, adding shadow maybe underneath the forearm in the crevices, just to add a bit of that natural blend. Just see where the highlights are and see where the shadows are, just to place the first ones. So there's more of a shadow on the shoulder there. I'm just gonna mop up some of that color, and there we go. Now let's do the groom. I'm gonna go into the beard a little bit. Of 
course, my dog's barking. Darken up under the neck, by the ear, forehead, the eye, the nose, like that. Now some parts seem to be drying a little bit faster than others, so I'm just gonna go over with water again to see if I can blend it out and make sure it all dries the same speed. Like that, and then his hand, oh, her other arm, can't forget about that, and that one's a little bit darker because it's behind the both of them. So really you just have to look and we will add more shadow like I said um, a little bit later once it's dry but just look at your photo and try to add shadows where you see it in the pictures okay there and then the hand all right so now we're gonna let that dry and then we'll move on to the next part Okay, so now we're gonna add our second round of skin color. So again, I'm just gonna make a bit more of that mixture. So I use permanent rose, cadmium yellow, and a bit of burnt umber, and you just water it down. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in this time and add a bit more shadow. And it's gonna be sharper lines because the first layer is dry. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going up around the back of the neck and I am gonna blend out some of those lines. So I wash off my brush, dry it, and then I'm gonna blend it out so it's not so sharp. Around the chin, I kind of want it to be a bit sharper. She has a really big smile here. So I'm just gonna do that cheek. The nose, the eye forehead again washing off my brush blending it out a bit so it's not so harsh I'm gonna add a bit more brown to the eye for a bit of eye makeup Bit of shadow there, a bit of shadow where her big smile is. Try and blend it out a bit so it's not so harsh. It's a little line. Blend it out a bit more on the cheek. You don't want it so, so harsh like that. And it will look a bit more, won't as look, it won't look as weird when we have a bit more detail to it. Okay, so around the neck, the chest. Again, wash off my brush, dry it out. I'm gonna blot up some if I think it's too dark. And then the arm, so where the crease is and where the shadow shows on the picture. Wash off my brush, dry it, blend it out a bit more. And the fingers too. Just want to try to blend out this face so it looks a bit more seamless. There we go. And once we add a bit more of the, you know, the eyebrow color and stuff, it will look a bit better. Okay, so now his nose is a bit darker because it's in the shade. Same with his eye. A 
blend it out a bit. That in the ear, around the neck. that just keep blending any harsh lines out that you feel like you need to his hand back here would be a little bit darker and grab a bit of brown too dark there we go okay so we've got the skin color oh nope our arm back here <laughs> Blend it out. And this is darker, remember, because it's behind them. Like that. Okay. There we go. Now we got the skin toned down and we're going to let that dry and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the hair and the facial hair and all that stuff. So she has nice dark brown hair. So I'm going to grab, I think this is sepia, nice brown, and then some burnt umber. It's a bit more on the redder side. I think that's brown matter. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to do the highlights first. So I'm going to go over the whole thing with the lighter wash of brown this okay and then the part that's behind the veil I might take like the slightest wash of brown mop it up a bit because you don't want to see it too much it's behind the veil okay a bit, oh, that's a bit too much red. But this is going to be the highlight. So we're going to let this dry first, and then we will come in and do the shadows in the hair. So just make sure it's a nice light wash like that. Okay, let's do his hair. His hair is a bit of a lighter brown, so I'm going to take some burnt umber. Lighten it up like this. Always start with the lightest color first and then work your way to making it darker. Say like that. And we can go in a bit more darker pigment. that okay and do some little hairs on the skin like that make your way down into the facial hair and then it gets a little darker down here letting it blend together his is already starting to dry so I'm just gonna start popping some more color in there and then you can darken some pieces up And again, we'll do more later when it's a lot more dry. Like that. Okay. 
And then before we work on her hair again, I'm just gonna add some eyebrows. So you know what, let's get our tiny, tiny brush. So I got my size two. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that dark brown. So you don't want it to overwhelm and I'm just gonna go over the eyebrow just a bit. Like that and same with his. And then I'll even go along the lash line a bit. Like that. And I can even start doing a little bit of detail on the face with the slightest bit of brown. So like her cheek where she's laughing. I'm gonna grab a bit of pink for her lips. That's a bit too dark. It was not that pink. <laughs> Like that there we go and then a little bit of brown for his cheek too in his lash line any d detail just like around the nose like that I'm not a fan of doing teeth so you can see her teeth a bit but I'm <laughs> just gonna leave it white I don't want to totally mess it up now his hair is pretty much dry, so I'm just gonna do some little bits of hair strokes. I did a lot of it with the pen, so I'm not gonna go too crazy. Just to add a bit of texture. Just remember this is a painting, it's not like real life, so don't put too much pressure on yourself to get every little hair stroke or whatever. Okay, like that. Okay, and now we're gonna work on her hair. So I'm just gonna grab my size six brush again. I'm gonna get my darker brown. So that sepia color. And we're gonna start putting in shadows. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in darker and I'm gonna start making like hair strokes where the braid is. leaving some of that highlight color underneath. So we're leaving a little bit of that white space. So this isn't even the darkest brown we're gonna use for this. This is the medium tone. Now, while it's still wet, I'm gonna go back in with some black, some of that sepia color, and then add in while it's still wet. So it can bleed in a little bit, add some shadows. Especially down here at the back. Okay, wash it off a little bit. Let's do this part. Again, leaving a little bit of white space at some points. And then going back in with that darkness. You might even, you know what, I don't know if I like that first layer for highlights, so I might even go back in with some white after. So let's just make this dark brown. Go back in with some of that sepia color and still again darken up. And we'll go back in with white after. Yeah, we're just making it all black <laughs> or brown and we'll do some detail later with some white. We'll do that. See, sometimes I try things and they work out, sometimes they don't. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of that brown, just for the piece of hair that's fallen down here. Any kind of little hair strokes with the lightest pressure of my brush. Okay. Let me get 
my smaller brush. Like that. Okay, so we've done their hair. Now we're gonna move on to the clothes. Okay, so I have to match his, we're gonna do more on the hair after too. Um, we're gonna match his tux, which is this bright blue. Now I'm seeing a lot of cobalt blue in there. And it's a bit more muted. It's not as bright. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this orangey red and I'm gonna make it a little bit dustier like that. Okay, and that just mutes the blue just a little bit. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna take a light wash of it. That's not a light wash, here we go. <laughs> More water on my brush, light wash. I'm gonna go over the whole thing. As we get closer to the bottom, I'm gonna add more water so it kind of just fades out into a really, really light wash. Oh my goodness, my dog is just going crazy outside. You better not wake up my son. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a bit more color. We wanna really make it like watercolory here too. Like I'm gonna let the wet on wet do some of its thing for some of the shadows. Okay, we want it to look like a watercolor painting. I'm not trying to go for something super realistic. So we're gonna get some of those creases in his jacket too with the wet on wet. So I'm just gonna pull some on the sleeve like that. I'm gonna darken under there just a bit. Okay, and we will again do more detail. On that one, it's dry. Man, my paper is drying so fast today. I think it's my hot lights. So you can see it's wet there and then dry down here. So I'm just gonna wet up any areas that I've started to dry so they all bleed together. Okay, so I'm gonna, am I gonna leave that? No. Here we go, sorry, there we go. <laughs> gonna get this blue back here. And I'm not gonna do his tie yet because I, I don't want to um, have the pink bleed into the blue. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that for now. Um, and then I am going to do the veil and some of her dress. So obviously it is white um, and I'm just going to take a little bit of black like a light, light, light wash of black, like barely there. And I'm just gonna start placing in where there would be shadows. Okay, and I'm gonna leave the majority of it white. So there's gonna be a shadow down here. Again, wash off your brush, blend it out. Back here. It's a bit too dark, so I'm just gonna Mop it up. Oh, come on, no. Of course. I'm gonna go down here. Try not to touch the blue. I don't want it to bleed into there. Wash off my brush, dry it, blend it out. Okay, so initially we're just doing the shadows. Okay, so it still looks like a white dress and I'm actually gonna add some white ink on it too. Um, and then we're gonna do some shadows in the veil. So I'm just gonna take some gray and those are gonna act like the creases in the shadows. 
like that. And I'm gonna fix that part in her hair too. Okay, so we got that. All right, is that blue dry? Yes, now we're gonna do the pink tie. A light wash. Okay, and then a bit more pink as a shadow, like that. Um, I'm gonna grab a bit of green to make a bit of a shadow color for the tie. Like that. Okie dokie. All right, now, because we're still waiting for his suit to dry to do more detail. I am going to take some of this bleed proof white ink. If you have white gouache or white watercolor, that will work too. Uh, I'm gonna go over this because that's not what I want. <laughs> so I'm using my white ink and I'm gonna go over some parts of the veil just to do some highlights, okay? And then same thing with the dress. So she has a lot of detail on her dress. It looks like it's very nice and beaded. So I'm just gonna use this white as a highlight to do some of the texture on her dress. Okay, so we have that shadow color underneath and I'm just doing little white dots everywhere to act as the texture on her dress. Okay, you don't have to go crazy and make it realistic, just adding a little bit of texture, like so. Fixing up any other white mistake marks that you might have made. <clears throat> Me, sorry. <laughs> okay, some cute little buttons on the back of her dress too. Let's do a couple of those. then as it gets closer to the bottom, those little texture marks can fade out. Okay, I actually get a little bit of that gray. Just make a bit more shadow under here. Okay, there you go. And then she even has some texture on her earrings. So I'm gonna take my white ink again and just do some dots just to make it look like it's sparkly jewelry, like that. Okie dokie. All right, now I'm going to add, I'm just gonna take some of that white off I'm gonna add some white highlights to the braids. Might go over that again with a bit more brown to make them have more brown highlights. I'm gonna add a bit darker um, shadows in there too. Okay, I'm gonna leave that for now. I'm gonna grab some more darker brown. And just do some darker bits, maybe a bit of black in there too. And just go over the hair strokes that really make those braids so you can see them. A bit darker as we get closer to underneath. Like this. Some texture in the hair that's being pulled back, just a couple of lines. Like that. I'm gonna go over some of those white marks that I made, the white ink with a bit of lighter brown. Wonder if I lighten it up a bit. With a lighter brown, if that would look. There we go. So we have our highlights with a 
mix of the brown and the white. There we go. Like that. And let's do this little rose right here. So that's a white rose. It has a little bit of a tint to yellow. So I'm gonna make it like a beigey, yellowy brown-ish. Water it down. Grab a little bit of green. Like that. Okay. And then before we do the detail on his jacket, I'm gonna start the bouquet and then we will be done. So the bouquet is these bright, beautiful pink roses it looks like, um, maybe some peonies in there, some of these dark like mahogany color, I don't know. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try and wing it. <laughs> so, so pretty. So I'm gonna start with these bright pink roses first. And I'm gonna use some opera rose, a bit of permanent rose as well. I'm going to start off, remember the, the flowers are not going to be as realistic. We're just having fun with them. So I'm going to start off over here with our, the way we usually do roses like this, wash it off a bit, let that brush out of the way. Okay. There's one there, one over here, one over here. Okay, then there's these light, light pink ones. So I'm just gonna wash a lot of that off and then just do these like, they almost look like peony. I don't know if there are peonies. There. Really light, they're almost like a creamy pink. I wish I cared more about my bridal bouquet at the time when I got married. I actually, I mean, my flowers ended up being okay. They were good. My, I got my coworker who's really good at arranging flowers to go to the grocery store and get me some hydrangeas the day of. So those were mine. Okay, so I'm just mixing this color. So I'm going dioxazine purple and alizarin red. And then I'm going to add a bit of black too, because they're really dark. They almost look like dahlias, I think. This is a cool bouquet. But yeah, so my, my bouquet was very, very, very simple. It was beautiful, but it was simple. So I'm going to do these like little dahlias. And they're bleeding into each other, and that's okay. Just these little line strokes. down here but yeah mine were all just white flowers and that was it but I just found that flowers while they were so beautiful were just way too expensive for me to go crazy on flowers I wish I could have back then now I feel like I would be different all right then they have these like little pinky fillers I kind of hang down little dots like that this is such a beautiful bouquet it's so fun to do like that and then I'm gonna create some looks like eucalyptus throughout just gonna pop that green in wherever I can I think it's like seeded eucalyptus so pretty
just gonna pop more of that green in wherever I can. Smaller ones. And then there's like little, little seeded ones, I think, too. So I'm going to grab some sap green and just do really small detail. Like that, just pop in the little. that. I might brighten up some of those pink ones again. Like that. So pretty. Adding a bit more texture there. And there you go. There is the bouquet. And I think, I don't know if I'm gonna add some more detail. I'm gonna make sure this suit is dry first. Okay, so now that it's dry, I'm just gonna go back into that suit where some of the shadows are. So it's pretty shadowy in here. Wash off my brush, dry it, and then just blend out that line. Go back in with a bit more, I think. Make it a lot darker in here. Blend it out. Same thing like under the arm. I'm just gonna go down here. Oops. Wash it, dry it. Blend out that line. Grab a little bit of Payne's Gray. Pop it in under there too. Wash it off, dry it, and then blend it out. that. Okay, do a little bit of some creases in the jacket. The arms especially. Okay, up here by the shoulder, just do a little bit of a crease there where the seam is. And then underneath the collar, and blend it out. Like that. And I think, mm, nope, hold on. I'm gonna do a couple more creases here for the shadow here. Go. Okay, and then I think I'm just going to add a couple more of the greenery bits coming over his jacket. There we go. There is the wedding portrait of Victoria and Seth. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. 
Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.